Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video in the Broken Arrow Coin Show, if Casey wants to pan. Uh, yes, they are uh, closed up for the night, but I wanted to talk to you guys about a coin table. Should you buy it? Should you be at a show? We're gonna talk about the fundamentals of why we started going to shows, how much inventory should you bring? All these questions that you have will be answered in this video. Let's get it started. As you guys look off in the distance here a little bit, you can see there's a lot of tables that have been bought, taken up, and used to, you know, pay for their living and pay for bills and other things. But there's a lot of things that go into spending the money for a table, spending the money on the additional hotels and food that you really have to start to think about before you go to a show. And um, so we're going to break down a little bit of our cost this episode. We're also going to talk about um, just some things that you should consider before walking into a coin show and spending all that money. Um, but yeah, let's go over some costs and give you guys a perspective on that. So we ended up getting a table here, like we said. Um, fortunately enough, we make YouTube content to promote this show on both sides. So Chris and Todd have been very fortunate enough to give us um, a table so we can connect with people, buy some stuff, sell some stuff. So the initial cost of the table, if someone was wanting to set up themselves, would be $175. Um, we fortunately didn't have to pay that, but we our hotel costs cost us $450 and our food and gas cost us around $350. So we're kind of, you know, $800 up a creek, right? And so um, the question for yourself would be, can you bring enough coins to sell that would to cover that cost? And a lot of that not only has to do with the selling side of coins, but also has to do with the buying side of coins. Can you have someone at your table that can sell coins for you while you're gone that you, that you can entrust with, uh, you know, with your coins and your cash, like Casey. Casey and I are great business partners and brothers, and he ended up selling a lot of coins and was able to get us this profit that we're about to reveal to you. But at the same time, I was out buying and continuing to make that cash turn. So when we got home, we can make this show worth more than what we initially got out of the profit just from this weekend. Um, so. The cool thing about this is we've developed a lot of connections and just for you guys to know off the bat, um, it's going to take you sometimes a few shows to get to know the dealers and then the dealers sometimes will just come to you, sell you some coins and you'll make a pretty penny. Um, another thing also to recognize is that if you're going to bring a thousand dollars worth of coins, um, it's going to be very hard to cover $850 in expenses, even if you reduce that down to $750. So we probably brought, you know, we brought a substantial amount of coins. I would say, you know, maybe 30, 30, something like that. Um, and so our sales for the show, which is great, um, has been uh, $20,000 in sales, which has been pretty good. We have Atmax, a few dealers, uh, a few customers that are from our YouTube channel. So thank you guys for, you know, uh, spending time with us at the table. Make sure to check out our website if you want to see some of our new purchases from this show. Um, but like I said, $20,000 in sales and after all said and done, we made it around $2,476. And so that's about 12.5% before expenses. But fortunately enough, we have some new purchases, like I said, that haven't sold, that we're gonna take home and work on and get that percentage a little bit up. And just to give you guys a perspective on you know, what's been selling and what things that we've been focusing on, um, if you were gonna be setting up at a show and be selling coins like this, so this is an 1898 Morgan dollar, and I'm gonna be transparent on what I bought it for, transparent on what I sold it for. I bought this coin for $100 today, and I sold it for 110, and I have to pay shipping. So $7 is what I'm gonna make on this coin, which is okay. It moves fast, and that's the way of the game. But if you're going to work on a table, if you're going to, if you're going to set up here, and you're gonna spend a lot of money to get here in time, make sure you're bringing coins that'll pack a punch, that'll get you some money, uh, make sure you buy them right. And so the ones that we bought right, here's one example. We bought this coin today, sold it today. This is a 1906 Barber Half, graded MS64 plus, CAC approved by PCGS. So this coin, it's an expensive coin. It's a tough coin to find. We bought it right at 1250 and we sold it for 1500 in a few hours. So this coin starts to get the ball rolling a little bit on what um, you can do to pay back your expenses, but also make a profit. And so 
Um, here, there's just a few things that I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, I really want more people at coin shows. I want to see more dealers here. I know there was some empty tables, you know, midway through the show. And so us talking about this, us being more open and transparent about, you know, things that dealers that buy tables have to go through. And also what stuff should you probably aim to bring? Um, I know that a lot of the US, old US coins have been working uh, out for us. Um, they've been selling like crazy. Um, and so if you guys enjoyed this content today, make sure to leave a like, uh, comment your thoughts on uh, what shows you might be going to. And are you kind of seeing the same trend? Have you set up at a coin show and lost money? Well, we'd love to hear that. All right, guys, so we're in Elite Rare Coins in Warren, Ohio. We were just in the Tulsa show talking to you a little bit about, um, you know, what should you buy a table at a coin show? Is it worth it for you? And we have Matt LaPosa here, he's the owner. Um, he wanted to talk to you guys a little bit, maybe give it some insight on his end. Should you buy um, a table at a coin show? He's driven all across the US, and, you know, I think he has a, you know, what, what do you think, Matt, about? Uh, someone that wants to set up for a first time at a show, what should they have or, um, you know, what's your insight on it? Well, there's lots of options. Uh, first things, location of where the show is. Is it something that you're going to drive to each day and can go home? Uh, are you going to have expenses of hotels, uh, food, eating out, that type of thing? That's the first thing to look at is uh, factor in the expenses of the show. So how much the table fee costs, uh, how much your hotel is going to be if you need to stay there for a couple nights. Um, the other thing is uh, look at what your inventory is, uh, look at the show, the demographic of the area where the show is, uh, you know, is it a you know, lower uh, middle class type neighborhood, is it an upper middle class neighborhood, um, you know, talk to some people that have set up at the show before, hey, what's your experience been in the past, um, and so you can kind of judge, hey, you know, if other dealers that have been doing the show for 20 years say, hey, you know, bullion does great at this show and you have zero bullion, you know, you might not do too well. Yeah, maybe um, uh, maybe it's a raw show too. Maybe yeah. people don't like rated coins or bullion, they just want to see the raw stuff. Sure. And so, um, what have been some good shows for you uh, these past few months that you can recommend to people? Because we have a lot of uh, viewers that watch all over the world and want to be at the shows that you might think are valuable. Um, some of the good shows in my area, or I mean in the country really, they just happen to be local. Um, one of the better ones is the PAN show, it's the Pennsylvania Association of Numismatics. Uh, it's in Monroeville, PA. It's coming up in October. Uh, there's probably about 120, 130 dealers that set up at that. There's dealers from all over the country come. Um, so that's a great show for uh, a collector that you know, there's so much variety at that show. There's there's paper currency, there's bullion, there's numismatic stuff, there's world coins foreign. Um, so just a good variety. Um, the Columbus show down in Dublin, uh, that was just Labor Day weekend. That's another good show, good variety of um, product for the collector. Um, going back to the person setting up at the, at the show, um, those are a little bit pricier shows, you know, probably not for a beginner person to set up at. Um, and personally, I would recommend for someone just starting off setting up at shows, um, try to stick with like a one day show that's a little, maybe a little bit smaller. Um, just kind of get people in the running and... Uh, yeah, just so you get the feel for the atmosphere, the, the flow of the show. Yeah, it might drain you for a few um, days if you went for four days. And you right. Just, I mean, you may feel like you don't want to do it again just because you're so thrown into the mix. Could be, yeah. And again, um, you know, you got to try to be up to date with your pricing on your product. Um, you know, if you come in, you've got a bunch of raw coins and they're underpriced, you know, you, you're bound to have a dealer come up and say, I'll, I'll buy your whole table. Well, right. if it's a three-day show, then, you know, hey, I guess if you sold all your stuff, then, you know, that's the ultimate goal is to sell your yeah. product. It might not be great for longevity for if you want to do many shows just because right. you can't make that a public offering. You know, if it takes you 20 years to acquire that much raw and you're selling it for cheap, it just might not be the greatest solution to go and sell it all at that show. Um, what what do you think is a great uh, maybe starting point in terms of uh, value of items that maybe you should bring to get people um, I, I Just my personal experience in shows with what I carry uh, for inventory and with what I see other dealers selling. Uh, I would say in general coins 
under $500 are probably the, the bread and butter of the coin show world. Um, you know, especially with the economy and stuff, you know, are there people that can buy a $5,000 coin? Sure. Uh, but there's people that even to buy a $500 coin, you know, they have to plan three, four months for that. Right. Um, out of their budget. They got families, they've got kids and, you know, stuff like that. So yeah. I, I would say, you know, the $50 to two, $300 coins, probably the average yeah. coin that I see selling that people buy. Yeah, it gets you also started on being, uh, you know, just getting a client list together that may be only buying $50 coins or $100 coins from you now. And then in 10 years, when they're hitting the peak of what they can make, Sure. in their life they could start moving into bigger items that may cost a few thousand dollars and the kids are moved out and so right. uh, but it's just a really yeah I think tables are, are great it shows you just have to play them right um, do you have any other thoughts you want to add Matt to the mix? Oh just I, I enjoy the I enjoy the interaction of trade shows I, I really enjoy them um, you know kind of the wheel and dealing um, it's it's fun it's exciting um, so yeah, try it out and start with a smaller show, and who knows, maybe after they do a while, they'll be setting up at the a and every year. You never know. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. But uh, thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like. We'll leave Matt's information down below, his Facebook, where he's located, and you know, if you want to reach him via phone number, ask him what he would pay for certain things, or if you want to buy some certain great collector coins here, you can reach out to him there. Uh, but you know, subscribe if you're new, coming out with videos every single week, and we'll see you guys in the next video.